Hey guys, it's May May, and welcome back to part two of our altered composition book turned gratitude journal. Now, when I put up the first episode, there were some questions, or not really questions, but some comments, and I wanted to address them. One was, if you want to cover this fabric spine, what do you do? Of course you can cover it. If I were going to cover it, I would probably use ribbon. Just take a piece of ribbon that's wide enough to cover from here around to the back and you could glue it on and have the finished edge of your ribbon here and the finished edge here. You could use anything that is fabric. You could also even do it with like Tyvek. Have you ever seen people do that where you can do it with a Tyvek and then cover it with um, cardstock even? I just don't mind it. And if you know me and my crafting, I think a touch of black makes everything more elegant and it brings out any black in the image. So that's why it doesn't bother me. The other thing people were asking me about was, oh, shouldn't you laminate the cover or shouldn't you cover it in some way? You certainly can. I'm going to say this to you. I have made these journals for years for friends, for myself. I have recipe books, etc. I've never covered them. Maybe I'm just not rough on them, but I don't have a problem with them over time. I actually kind of like when they get a little more worn. I think they look kind of cool. But if you would like to laminate it, you certainly can laminate the sheet before you put it down. Or something we used to do back in the day is cover it with clear contact paper is another thing you can do. But that's if you're interested. I just wanted to cover those two questions. Um, that was really the only two thing I saw where people were questioning and I wanted to make sure I covered my thoughts on it, just so you know. All right, so today we are finishing this guy. It's not gonna be hard. Um, some of it will be time consuming, but not for you guys, just for me, because in the video we'll cut it away. But the first thing I wanna do is talk about tags. So you have these huge pockets and I told you I'm kind of emulating the first book I did that I just love so much. And one of the things I did was I made tags with my Cricut at the time, okay? So I took um, images or pieces of the page and I cut them with my Cricut to get different shapes of tags. Now this one in particular, I cut with my Scan and Cut and I filmed the video to show you how to do it. But you can do it with your Cricut, with your Joy, etc. So I have some tags that I measured out what size I wanted them to be and cut them, like I said, with my cut machine. This one is one I cut with my Scan and Cut. And then also, let me put that one in, also this little guy, I cut it with my Scan and Cut. But I wanna show you a couple of other ways to get tags. So if you don't have machines, you can still get your tags. So let's make a few more. We've got a pocket in the back we need to put a tag in. We've got um, a couple of places we need to. So I'm just gonna grab a piece like this and cut it down to size. And because the pocket in the back is pretty big, I really could cut it down to any size I want. So I'm gonna let the width stay like it is. And I'm gonna cut this one to be, let's make it like eight inches, a six by eight. No, let's add a half an inch to that, six by eight and a half, because I'm gonna show you how you can get a frilly border without having to use a machine. And here's how I'm gonna do it with my border punches. We got so many new ones in the store. I love this one and you guys did too. So let's use this one. So what you do, I just cut a rectangle piece of cardstock and then I'm just gonna put it into my um, punch here. And one thing I love about the punches, I don't know if you ever do this, but it's got these little lines where you can center your page that you put in. So I love having that feature. And so I'm just going to punch and then I'm just gonna slide this down and line it up and punch again. Try not to get my head in the screen there. Sometimes if I can see better to this side or to whichever side I can see better, I will flip it around like this so I can get it lined up just right. That feels right. Perfect, and now we'll do this last little bit. And I love having border punches on hand for this very thing. This will look so fancy and so cute, and we didn't have to do anything. Look at that, won't that be a cute tag to go in our book. So let's go in and bring our book over and we'll put it to the back. Now in my original, I noticed that I did not mat these tags. I'm not going to mat these either. And the reason I'm not is because I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. I may put photos on them. I may journal on them. I don't know. But isn't that a cute way to get a tag that's not just your everyday tag look, right? Okay, so border punches is a way. Now let me show you another way. So for this one, the length of my tag is not going to matter. I want to discover how wide I want my tag to be, and that's because I'm going to make for myself a template to use to make my tag. So I think I want my tag top to be about six and a half inches wide. So I'm just going to come right here to six and a half and trim that off. This is just scrap paper from my bin, by the way. 
it is cardstock. Now you might want to do this with like printer paper or something like that, but I like cardstock because I can get a better trace in a few minutes. You'll see what I mean. All right, so I'm just going to fold this guy over. We're not making a card. We don't care if it cracks. We're just making a template. So I'm going to fold it over like this. And with my pencil, I'm going to sketch in a shape. And here's what I mean by sketching in. I'm just going to sketch like this. Just a rough shape to get me started, okay? Just so I have an idea of where I'm going. And then I'll come back and kind of solid that shape in. Now that I think I like it, I'm going to bring that out a little bit and just kind of solid it in. Does that make sense? Just kind of make it a solid line now. So now I'm just going to take my cutter bees and I'm going to cut that line that I traced just like so. This is for if you don't have a cutting machine, if you don't have border punches, if you don't have a scan and cut. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have a way, if you don't have dies, if you don't have some way to make yourself a frilly tag, we just go old school, right? So look, won't that be a cute top for a tag? Actually, I think I want to flatten that out a little bit. So watch this. I'm just going to close this down. And where this curve just starts right here, I'm just going to bring that straighter out. And take some of that off and you just play till you get it like you like it. I'm pretty good with that one. So now I need to cut a piece of paper the size of my tag like in a rectangle and I think I'm actually going to only cut it six inches wide instead of six and a half like I did my template but you'll see it'll still be fine and then look I really like this young lady sitting here and it gives me an opportunity to use that image on the inside again. So now I'm going to trim off my branding strip here at the bottom and then cut the tag whatever height I want it. Let's see what eight and a half looks like. I kind of like eight and a half. Let's try that. Six by eight and a half. And then we'll put that little frilly border at the top. So what do you do? You guessed it. You're going to come right here. And if you want to be really specific, you can center this, okay? So eight and a half. So there's, I'm using it upside down because this is where I'm going to cut my frilly part. I have a line in the middle of my tag. Remember, because we folded it in half. So I'm lining it up in the center. And then I'm just going to trace. And whatever of this template we get is what we get. So trace and then trim that out. This part is not for everybody. This technique is not the easiest and not for everybody. But for those of you who want this look and don't have anything to make it happen, I don't want you to say you can't make it happen because you can. Use what you got. Make it happen. And this is just fun. You don't need many of these for your book either, so it's not like you're going to be sitting all day making these, but look how cute. Just that little edge just changes things, doesn't it? So now let's add that to the book. I think I'll put it in that back pocket as well. I think it'll be pretty back here. And let's see if we can make that one kind of show behind it. I like them to kind of be angly. I might even trim this one down a little bit. It might be a little tall, so let's trim it down so we can really see it. And see, that's the beauty of making your tags yourself like this. You can just kind of randomly trim them off. So let's trim this off half an inch and see if we like that better. You see how much snugger or how much tighter the pocket in the back is than the pocket in the front because we don't have the gusset? This is a good way to show you that. I'm going to flip this around so more floral shows. Isn't that pretty? You can just play. I love that. So there are tags, and you could go crazy and make them everywhere. I want to make a couple pockets here. I want to do one here, and I think back here, and then I may even, no, this is good. I think just here and here we'll do some pockets, and let me show you my plan for that. Super easy. So I thought for those pockets, I could utilize these rectangle cut-aparts. So I'm going to cut a strip off of here. I'm not being precious about which images or anything. They all match and they're all beautiful. So I'm just going to trim these away from each other in sets of two. And I'm going to see if this will work. So there's that. So it looks like I might need to trim about three quarters of an inch off, which I don't think will be a problem. Um, if you were going to gusset this, you could use that to score, use that excess to score. But I'm not going to gusset these. I'm just going to glue these straight down just because they're a little bit thick. So let's trim these off. And I know you're thinking, but you're going to cut some of the image off. It's not going to matter. This is a shabby chic album. And in the end, it will not matter. So let's cut three-fourths of an inch off of this. Shabby chic. We just want the florals. We just want the patterns. We're not as worried about... The image, I know some of you are cringing. I can feel it. I could cut it from the top, but I think the bottom is the way to go. Okay, so now we'll go back over here, and I think I might even round the corners. 
Maybe not. I may not need to round the corners. We'll make that. I tell you what, before I put these in, I might ink them. I am going to do a lot of inking on this album, which I, I probably should have done ahead of time, but I didn't. And I'll show you why it doesn't really matter, but I might ink these so they'll really pop. Let's do that. Because we're going to do a lot of inking on the outside for sure. Tell me in the comments below. I already know the ratio of this, but in the comments below, are you a person that if you're going to ink, has to ink every page? Or are you a person like me who can ink whatever you want to ink and not ink the uh, and not ink every single page? Tell me which one you are. I already know how it's going to land, but it'll be interesting to see. This one's going to have a lot more ink on it than you think, even though we didn't ink those very first pages when we started. There'll be very few spaces that won't be able to be ink, be inked. I am this kind of person. I ink where I want to ink, and the reason is, I get tired of this motion. <laughs> Let me be honest. I think I'd rather fuzzy cut. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. So let's put these into the book and make them pockets. So if they're gonna be pockets, you might wanna make some tags to go in them. One thing I do wanna encourage you of is when you're making pockets, don't use your tape glue here. And the reason for that is tape glue never dries. And so when you're trying to slide pages in and out, that tape can grab where wet glue will eventually dry and it won't grab anything that you're sliding in and out, but tape will. All right, do your pinch, so pinch in the middle so they'll lift up a little bit, just enough for you to easily be able to slide pages in there. See that? Isn't that pretty? The ink is gorgeous on this paper. See, you still know it's a, you still know it's a lantern and you still know it's a colander, right? You still know. All right, let's put one on the back. There's two pockets, quick and easy. All right, I think that's the only place I'm gonna be adding little pockets like that. If you added more pockets through here, and I did read your comments that some of you guys said you would add more and you love the technique, so you're going to be doing it, then I would add more of these little guys just to hold things. All right, now let's work on the elephant in the room, the closure. Now, I have a plan for this closure. It's going to be a little different than the one I did the first time, but pretty similar. We're going to make a belt that wraps around from the back and to the front. And we're going to use ribbon to give us space all right, so bear with me as I do it. I'll explain it as we go. So I told you I wanted to use this stripe as my closure, as my belt, right? So I'm gonna lay this on the back and I'm gonna, I want to be able to glue, I don't want it to be this big, obviously, we're gonna get there, but I want to glue it from that edge around to the front. And what I wanna see is, do I need to cut any of this off? And I do, it's a little too long, okay? I wanna have some give, I want it to lift a little bit, and it's a little too long, so I think I want it to end somewhere in here. So I'm thinking about an inch and a half off of that. Now I'll tell you my final measurement because this is one you might want to duplicate. So let me take an inch and a half off. And then I wanna cut this into two pieces. All right, so I think I want it, let's make it an inch and a half. Since we did that, let's just do it. An inch and a half strap, I think that'll work. So there's one and another inch and a half. So let me measure this and tell you what it ended up being. Okay, so these pieces turned out to be 10 and a half by one and a half. Now, we are going to sandwich these together and we're gonna sandwich some ribbon in them to start our closure, all right? So I'm using this pretty silver edged ribbon. I just think it'll be so pretty in the um, album itself. So you wanna give yourself enough. You don't need a whole bunch. I'm always, I always do too much ribbon. <laughs> I'd rather have too much than not enough, okay? So I'm just gonna keep this piece here for me and we're gonna coat this in adhesive. Now I'm going to use sticky tape here. Now you can do this with glue. You could just wet the glue on this side and make sure you get a good covering of glue um, before you sandwich these guys together. But the tape seems to add almost like a fabric quality. It makes it almost feel like fabric when it's done. And it makes that wraparound flap so much sturdier than your glue does. But if you need to use glue, go for it. I've used glue, I use glue for years. Now you're also thinking, why didn't you just cut one piece, score it down the middle, and fold it in half. Here's the reason I didn't. I find when I do that, that the folded edge gets a little bulky. Um, I've done it like that before, but it's not my favorite way to do it. So that's why I'm just gonna go ahead and do the two pieces here, because I like the flatter edge I get. All right, so there's our sticky piece, okay? And what we wanna do, oh, I missed my one little, where I had to reload over here. Okay, 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place some ribbon in on this end. And I wanna lay it in a pretty good bit. Let's lay it in about two and a half inches because I don't want it to pull out. And you wanna try to get it centered. So you know me, I'm just gonna eyeball. And then what I'm gonna do is put some tape over that because I want it to sandwich as well. So I'm just gonna lay some tape over this piece of ribbon. Look, that covers up perfectly. Stick that down. You could wet glue this part. Like if you just wanted to put some wet glue on the ribbon, that would be fine. But this is gonna work perfectly. All right, so we're gonna sandwich that ribbon in. And close this up. This will create our super sturdy wrap around band. Belly, ba it's not a belly band, it's just a strap, I guess. So look, isn't that nice? Now before I do anything else, I'm gonna round these corners. I think it'll be pretty to have those rounded. So my camera messed up and you might not have seen this, but I use my scallop punch instead. So on the corner, I just put this in and scallop punched here and then scallop punched here. And I like how that looks. I like how it's kind of um, a little something extra besides just being corner rounded. Now I'm not going to round this end because I want it to be flush. Now I want you to take your ruler and we are going to kind of treat this like ribbon. We're gonna kind of get this bend started on this end. The end is really the only place you need that little bend and it'll it'll kind of work itself out, but I just kind of want to get it started, all right? Now we need to go to our album and we need to add our second piece of ribbon because this is where I'm changing things up a little bit from my first book. I want a second piece of ribbon to come here to meet this piece that's gonna come here, okay? So I want to decide where I'm gonna place this guy. I don't want it to cover her head so I'm gonna go up a little higher in the back. So what I'm gonna do is let my cutting, uh, my cutting mat help me with this, all right? So I think I want my little strap to be about there. And if I look to my cutting edge, I can count. That's one, two, three, four, five inches up. That's, that's key. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come over here and mark five inches up. And just make a pencil mark right there. So that says I want my, um, piece. Look, it's going to land right over those. Isn't that cool? I want my piece to go right here. So I need to add ribbon to this side. So let's go back to our ribbon. And I'm going to cut myself another piece, probably more than I need. We can edit that um, when we get to it. You'd rather have too much, trust me. And now I'm going to take some tape. And I'm going to place it kind of eyeballing where I really need it to land. So I'm just going to like go about that far. I'm sorry. I know y'all want me to be more specific. Look, I'm going to lay this here. That's about midway. So that's about right for my tape. I might need to go a little high with my um, ribbon, but we'll be all right with that. So let's reveal this and put our ribbon in. Again, about two and a half inches of our ribbon in there. And I'm going to go ahead and put tape out the rest of the way. So if you wanted to, and you might should, I'm just going to kind of prop this here and go ahead and just trace the other side so I know where to put my tape. So between here and out. So let's take this tape and let's coat the back. Again, stability is what we're looking for. Okay, so you can see I've laid my adhesive in. I've got a little bit hanging over the edge here. I don't want that either. Let's get that off of the board, of the binder. And then one thing I wanted to point out is I went a little shy putting my adhesive on this side so it wouldn't get gummy on the end. Okay, it's time to install. So now we're just gonna place this over where our adhesive is, just like so, and run that all the way out to the edge. And I'm gonna do the Shannon trick. I'm gonna burnish it with my um, bone folder just to keep I've got glue on my fingers and I don't want to rub that onto the page if I can keep from it So I flipped it over and you can see this is how our closure will work now We will tie this close with a bow You can put the bow close to the little strap or far away, but this is how we're gonna close it now The reason I did it this way is because I don't know how big this album is gonna get you know, there's no telling what I may or may not add to it. So you want to give yourself a pretty big bow to start with, okay? So you have all that room. So I'm gonna push this ribbon as far as the bow lives. And I feel like that's a pretty good spot. And then I'm gonna trim this away here and make sure that's at a little angle there. 
just for cutesies. I will fray check that before it's over with. And now look, I have a lot of room because this guy can grow out and my ribbon, I have plenty of ribbon to grow my book out thicker. Does that make sense? You have to think about that in the long run, okay? Because you want it to, you know, be able to stretch. And look how clean. Isn't that neat? Everything's nice and neat and clean and you have a great little closure. Super easy to do. It looks more difficult than it is. Now you're going to say, but why not just use a magnet? Well, that's the thing. If I was going to use a magnet, I would need to put multiple spots for it to adhere to or have some sort of bar for it to adhere to. This way, I don't need a magnet, number one. And number two, this can grow as thick as it wants to get pretty much. I mean, it's got a long way to grow. Make sense? Okay, let's do the inside part I wanted to do. And I'm, I will tell you, I'm not going to do all of this with you on camera. This is the thing that's the most time consuming. So I'm going to show you the process and then um, do the rest myself. And then we'll come back and do the last bit and we're done. So this part is the most time consuming. Okay. This is where we're going to stamp on a bunch of the pages. So you go into your stamp sets and you pull out this, this stamp sets that go with the theme of your book or kind of fit the look of your book. For me, I went through my scripture sets and pulled some out. Now, this is about half as many sets as I would probably use, which is why this is a time consuming part, but it's really pretty. Now, I'm going to take some of the stamps, just random images, whatever I like. It can have text. It can just be images. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to do this. Actually, I think I'll do this with my memento. Let me tell you why I'm going to do it with a dye and not a pigment. Pigment ink is thick and it'll kind of sit on the page. So I'm going to do memento, which will kind of sink into the page really quick. And here's what you do. You just stamp images throughout the book. So like here, I'm going to start on this first page and right down here, I'm just going to stamp this little bird. And then I think I'll put one of the sentiments on from the set too, because it'll be cute just to have, have something like that on there. So let's see, here's some scripture. And one cool thing about adding scripture, especially if you're giving it as a gift, you'll be surprised how the scripture will speak to the recipient. Like you just never know what they'll be going through when they open their book. But look how cute this is on the pages, okay? So you do a page here. And then you decide, now you have a lot of pages in this book, okay? So you decide. But I would probably go about 10 or 15, maybe 20 pages away from that one. Here's how I did it. I just kind of grabbed some pages and went. Um, and you pick another image that you want to put in. And you just keep going. And you just stamp, not every page. Every page is too much, trust me. You do not have to do every page for this to be effective. You just want when you get to different pages in your book to have something else in the book for you. So like this one, I'm gonna put at the top, just like so. Let's get this salt shaker off of here because I think that'll be cute next to it. And this is the fun part. It may not seem super fun at first because you're like, oh, what a mess I'm making with stamps. Take your time. And if you want this to be an enjoyable process, you didn't see me do it, but do this. Clean the stamps in between using them and go ahead and put them back on their containers. So when you're done, all you have to do is put your stamp sets away. I promise that will make you enjoy this even more. So you just run through. Now I'm gonna do this um, off camera because I'm gonna do you know a lot. But again, so this way you go here and you have this cute little reminder here. And by the time you get to whatever number page this is, there's another cute little reminder. And in my first book, I encourage you to go watch because I flipped through some of them I just did patterns. Some of them, I just, I've mixed up the colors. I think I use multiple colors. So that's a cool way. It's, it's something really neat to do, especially if you're giving it as a gift. I think it's really cool. All right, well, let's ink. So I'm going to be using Walnut Stain. I'm really into it lately. I like how dark it is and how big a payoff I get. So I'm going to get my Walnut Stain out. And I need to clean my work surface for a second to give me some room, and we'll get right back together. So again, if you are a purist with inking, you would have done all of this as you went. There is no judgment here. You ink when you want to. I am not that person. I'm not a purist. I, this is always an afterthought for me, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run around, and I'm going to ink. And the thing about it, I want this to look, you know, kind of worn because as it wears, it will add to the aesthetic. I want to make sure I don't get my ribbon in there. That's the reason if, you, if you're if you a messy person with your ink, you're going to want to do this before you put ribbon and all that kind of stuff on. But I'm just honest with you. This is how I craft. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing not real around here. All right. Now, I'm even going to run this up the edge 
and it'll be fine. Even if it's on the black and even if it's not, I'm just gonna run it up that edge like that. And look how it makes that image just pop. Isn't that beautiful? I'm gonna do the back the same. I'm even coming in here and just inking where that is. I just think that's pretty. Just wherever it catches, I'm just gonna let that be there. Like almost like it's dirty and smudged. It's gonna get dirty and smudged. And maybe this is why I don't mind not laminating because I it'll get dirty and smudged over the years and I think this just adds to it. All right, and then I'm gonna do my piece here. All right, and then on the inside, same thing. Ink anything you want to ink. Let's ink the inside of our little flap here. And then you can ink your tags. You can ink the inside covers. And of course I will do that because I think you should. I think all of that should be cohesive. So I will come back through and ink these. Full disclosure, my camera battery is about to die and I don't wanna have to start over because I'm in the middle of inking, but I wanna show you this. So this is cool, okay? What you're gonna do is on your pages, on the end, take your ink. So I'm dipping into my Distress Ink and I'm going to rub those pages. And I think this changes it so much. Do you see that? I just think that's so pretty. It makes it look vintage and antique -y and I love it. So same thing here on the end. So I'm just gonna rub this in. And it just looks like tea dyed paper. It looks like a journal you've had for years. It just changes everything. That was one of the things about my first one that I did in that video that I think made it really pop. And if I'm not mistaken, I might have used black ink. I can't remember exactly. But even any ink you want to use would be beautiful. Um, even if you use purple or pink or anything around the edge, this makes this not look like a composition book and it changes it to an heirloom looking piece. It really does. It's so beautiful. See that? It's so beautiful. All right. So there is that. Let me close my ink up before I get it where I don't want it. Now, the only other things I would do, I will fray check the ends of my ribbon and on the inside, on your tags, I've got some ink in here. You might wanna add some little frilly pieces or some of the cut aparts from your paper pack. You might wanna add some little tab pulls or something to your tags. You might wanna make some more tags for pockets like these. Um, I would suggest that would be really cute to have some more tags in those kind of pockets. It's endless. Tags and pockets can go everywhere, but that is the gist of making this composition book. I love how it turned out. I think it's beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and tie this closed and fray check those ends and let them sit and dry. And there you go, guys. Our, grad, our, our composition book turned gratitude journal using the graceful paper from Mente, which oh, this paper has been a dream, right? Isn't it beautiful? So much more you could do, but I love the simplicity. I don't have to do anything to the cover when Mente does it for me. So there you go, guys. Be sure to share your creations with us on our customer gallery and on Discord. We love to see what you guys are making. Don't forget to subscribe. And I've got at least one video using the Scan and Cut showing you those tags from this um, album. So be sure to check out those videos as well. Thanks so much for being here. Till next time. Bye now.